and Steve's here. So that's fine. And we are recording. Okay. Welcome everybody to our blended meeting of August and September. Um, first, I think we'll do the approval of the minutes and then we'll get into introducing. Okay. I will uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Elaine. And okay, all in favor, yes? Aye. Okay. Aye. All righty. Next up, before audience comments, I think we should have a little round of uh, introductions so that everybody finds out who these two mysterious people are over here <laughs> and that we get to meet, meet our new representatives. So we'll start with Elaine. I'm Elaine Shaker. I am on Delaware County Council. However, I've been on this board for many, many years in many, many different uh, hats. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I've been changing the word for five years ago. We stick around here. Yeah. I'm Beth Sassman. I'm a district conservationist for MRCS, and I cover Chester Delaware and Philadelphia County. Uh, Vince Pannoni, I've been on the board since the beginning of the year. My name is Matthew Scott. I'm a conservation officer with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Um, my jurisdiction is Delaware County. I investigate everything from reptiles and amphibians to pollution and everything like that. So glad to be here. Excellent. Welcome, Matt. Can we introduce things to Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm Karen Will. I'm a water science specialist for the district. Gina okay. Pizzetti, admin specialist. Harmon Swagger, I'm the new technician. Excellent. I'm Nico Miani. I'm the new intern and shadow to Karen. All righty. <laughs> Michelle Wheeler, district technician. Ari Milo, district technician. Ed McGarry, the conservation district manager. And I'm Cheryl Tamola, and I'm the chair. And this Donna Silvestri from Garnet okay. Valley and Bethel Township Chair of Park and Rec. Excellent. We don't have anybody else on the air, do we? Uh, Linda, Linda's here, but I think there's something with she can't hear or something. Well, there's sure. a um, her microphone is off. Yeah, it is. Yeah, she couldn't hear before, but, but then I I turned our microphone on. I just left the microphone off while we were getting ready for the meeting in case somebody said something. Well, that... she must have turned hers off because she was a little. Yeah. Oh, I can I hear. I can hear, but, but cannot talk. talk. Okay. Oh. Larger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome everybody. It's nice to see you folks. And uh, we shall commence. There are no, I believe, audience comments, are there? No, we had not received them. Okay. Alrighty. There's Steve. There's Steve. So for everybody's edification, this is Steve Beckley. We have new members here. You can sit over here. We have a full table to them. Actually, this is. Well, now I'm calling us to order, which I guess I did before. Anyway, uh, correspondence and announcements the PACD July monthly report. And is there anything in it that we are supposed to be paying attention to? No, there was nothing. Uh, uh, the uh, event that we need to take any action on. Okay. I read it, but <clears throat> I read it when it came out, and my mind is like a sieve. It just goes right through. All right. So nothing that we need to attend to. Excellent. All righty. Now we have a motion request to file all bank statements for audit. I will entertain a motion. I'll make motion. a motion. Okay. I'll second then. One of us will second it. Both together. All righty. Thanks. All in favor? Fine. Okay. Now you see that that uh, value is 1,100,000. Now that's going to be down significantly after today. Uh, <laughs> we still have these checks, right? <laughs> oh, explain it. Okay. Um, but it does look like we're extremely wealthy. It does look like that now. It's, it's low volume road is not our program. It's not our funds. It's uh, pass through funds. Yeah. So that's some money in there. We also have sixty seven thousand dollars from the PUC that uh, we hold now because it's from July to 
September, we turned it over to the county in January. We just gave them the fifty-seven thousand from last year. So, the, the, those are the ones that makes it the go up. outstanding right ones, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, emergency reviews. A motion to approve or deposit the following emergency review fees. There are three of them: Concord, Tinicum, and Swarthmore for three thousand three hundred. I would entertain a motion. Make a motion. Okay, right. Thank you both. All in favor? Okay. Another motion request to approve check for $500 to Darby Creek Valley Association for the completion of a spring 2022 mini grant. Now, what did they do with their mini grant? They purchased water monitoring supplies. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, so they uh, expanded their water monitoring activities okay. upstream. Very good. Excellent. Well, thank you. So, another motion request. Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Okay. And yet another motion. We're going to keep doing this as a pattern. Um, another motion request to approve a check for three thousand two hundred and sixty-three dollars and ninety-seven cents to Home Depot. Yeah, just a little background before we get into it is that we had uh, a growing greener grant um, for 11,000, give or take more, uh, to maintain our trailer and keep it functioning. Uh, we've uh, decided to, um, we're going to keep the gas power equipment that we have, and which is the large auger and two small augers and our gas pumps. Uh, but we're going to switch over to um, battery operated for what we can. We're going to get a new battery operated auger and two uh, battery um, string trimmers mm -hmm. and have big battery packs that it'll last quite a long time because it's the pack you wear on your back with three uh, five uh, hour batteries on it. So uh -huh. it'll and and the gasoline is uh, something that we're trying to get away with uh, from in the county. So get away with get, get away, away from get away from in the county so that it was met with the sustainability goals that we're trying to implement. Uh, we would have tried to replace the uh, the water pumps, but uh -huh. there's just not a suitable alternative for that right now. So but everything that we could replace we have. Better. Well, we will. With we will that. With the Once we do this, right? right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, given that, I bet somebody really wants to make a motion, right? Make a motion. Oh, you go right here again. Okay. Second. Second. Five seconds. All in favor? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, next up, a request a motion to approve a check for $587, $587. to Southeast PARC and D. Association for expenses they paid relating to our grow, growing greener grant for the conservation planting trailer. More stuff. Yeah, Karen, you want to talk a little bit about that? So um, we've been reimbursing the RCD for any of their trailer expenses through the growing greener grant that we currently have for the trailer. So the expenses that we're reimbursing um, at this time to R C and D are expenses for the GPS tracking of the trailer that's mm -hmm. a paid subscription um, and our nationwide insurance. Excellent. Well, very good. All righty. Thank you. Oh, we need somebody. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. <laughs> seconds. Okay. I'll second. Okay, good. Thanks, Liz. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, that wasn't me. <laughs> okay, now I will be busy signing checks. Okay, checks to be signed. There are a lot of them. Yes. Eight of them. Is this because I, I missed last month? No, it's just that the, this was the time where we went through and trying to straighten up. Two, part of the problem with the first two you'll see is this transfer. Right. The state is trying to do as much as they can through direct deposits. However, they only allow us to have one account. However, they make us have multiple accounts to put the money. So then when we get it in, it's deposited in our affiliate money market account, because that's what we started with. But the low volume road now has to be transferred out and put into the low volume road account. Okay. So those, that's what those two so big ones there are. All right, all Alrighty, the first ones are uh, accounting people, right? Yeah, the, that's in our accountant. They pay us, uh, bill us twice a year, uh, usually about the same, 1100 so it's 2200 a year we pay for their services to help us uh, keep our quick uh, books up to date. Okay. 
and the other two, four and five, are to keep carrying around. Yeah, that, that's the state grant. We get the, all the state money we get for salaries is transferred over to uh, the county into our revenue account. So we, uh, in our budget process, we budget this year was two hundred sixty-three thousand dollars that we come up from uh, serve uh, from these uh, grant funds and also from our erosion control fee and our clean water fund will transfer some over. Uh, so now we're we're very close to. Um, being, we're, over, we're on target. I think we only have like thirty thousand dollars more to transfer over, over to meet our goal after today. Oh, good. Ahead of time, right? Well, it's, it's right. not ahead of time. It's because the money comes in that way. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, it seems like it's the ENS fees right? are about on par with what we anticipated. So okay. we're going to try. Okay, and money from the affiliate to petty cash to replenish account that has to happen too. Yes, we've been using it for uh, quite a few things. Be able to use uh, billing online, uh, so that's why it's it's now fourteen hundred dollars. Already, when I need a motion for this, right? Can I sign these? We, yes, we we could get a motion for all of them at once. Right, that would be great. Unless anybody has any objections to any one in particular. I move to authorize all of our checks and transfers listed on the agenda. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next up, summer intern. Yeah, Nico, would you um, like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're majoring in and what your um, and uh, how long you've been here and what you've been working on since you've been here with the county? All right. Um, I'm Nico. Uh, I am majoring in geoscience of so geology at Skidmore College of State of New York. I've been here since July, yep, mid-July, um, and I've been working on a bunch of different things. I worked on the conservation trailer, getting new tools for it, figuring out what tools were necessary, going through the whole process of learning how batteries work, how they can be stored, how you can replace gas power tools with battery tools. Um, I worked with Karen on the uh, Smedley, you know, Smedley Park planting uh, proposal, mostly figuring out the area, figuring out where gas and pipelines were so that we could not obstruct them and then not get in trouble with people. Yes. Um, and uh, lately I've been working on updating the uh, conservation district display board, as well as creating a pamphlet for anyone that wants to do tree revetments in um, many parks. Excellent. So you've been busy. Good. The, the display board uh, at the Sustainability Commission, we broke it out to, to set up a table. And the one that we had is about 15 to 20 years old, and it weighs more than it, it's an insurance liability to carry it around. <laughs> so we bought a lighter one That's and uh, to be able to carry it more efficiently. So Nico also made it more Informative acceptance, right? Yeah, so. Yes, right. You should have saved for all that work, right? <laughs> right? Well, thank you, Nico. And welcome. Nico's last day is on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm very appreciative of uh, County Council for authorizing the personnel the ability to have interns. We used to do that every summer, and it was very productive for us doing a lot of things that uh, we just can't. Uh, lay the manpower out and uh, right. Nico is very helpful in getting Karen with a lot of projects we have on the table and getting them moving and keeping them functioning. So it, it's definitely a benefit for us for a, a small amount of money. So hopefully I can get it approved for next year. <laughs> Give them any compliments. <laughs> and and the personnel, there was a guy um, in, in that department that uh, worked with us from the day one and got it to, got found a person for us really quick, which I didn't think was a, a thing because we we got a notice very late in the thing, but uh, I was very uh, happy. Right. So we, we worked out. We had quite a few interns in, in many different departments. Yeah. We started out with a couple two years ago. And a bunch of That's them. really wonderful. Ben. It worked out really well. I mean, it's a really small price tag. Right. And then these people, you know, maybe some of them come back and work in public service. Right. And they gain experience no matter what they do with their lives. It's good for them. It's good for us. Yeah. Alrighty. Thanks. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> now we're going to get into the elevated review, the new process, and 
problems. Yeah, well, Linda can't talk, but <laughs> what, the pro what the problem is, is the elevated review is that the Southeast Regional Office was chastised for not following the SOP. And uh, it's a lot of the, we developed a process and we were working along pretty well. So at the round table, we were told to do the elevated. We had to follow the SOP and do the elevated review. So that started at the, towards the end of July, July 22nd, and we had two that we sent in. The first one uh, shouldn't have been a problem. It came in, it was just a couple minor things, that, but, but needed time to address them. And I met with John Hohenstein and it worked out. He just told me to go ahead and continue what we were doing. So really not the SOP, but we're getting it done. It's a 200 South Radnor road. It's a, that's the project in Radnor Township. And I have a meeting with them on Monday to straighten that out. And your Chester Road. You got me 200 what? 200 South Radnor Chester Road, I believe. Yeah. Radnor Chester, okay, yeah. yeah. Radnor Road. Really no, right. No. That's, 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 that's yeah. That. Sorry about that. Yeah. That's right. And uh, so we're we're doing that 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 uh, tomorrow. I have a meeting with them to finalize that. Hopefully. The other one is called Rooster's Watch, and it was problematic for us because we had originally approved that back in 2014, and it has no surface water discharge. And they did do a discharge analysis in 2014, which we approved. Um, but when it came back in, you had to meet ABACs, and the the policy for offsite discharge changed in 2019. So we had some questions, and we were trying to work through it. The consultant did not submit the correct discharge analysis um, like he did the first time. He submitted something else, and, what, and we told him uh, on the second review he had to. So then we went to John Hohenstein. I said, John Hohenstein, who is the chief, I suggested that we needed to um, have a meeting with this guy and think, well, then he sent it over to Chris Smith and Chris Smith didn't want to have a meeting. He wanted us to send another letter out to tell him what to do. Well, that's the purpose of the meeting. So we're sort of at loggerheads. I wrote a letter uh, appealing uh, Chris's decisions with John and I have John has not talked me back. So it's sort of dragging this process on, but. Um, it, it's an awkward process to begin with. It was done uh, between DEP and uh, the legislators. They were fighting about permits taking too long. So rather than trying to work out a system that worked, they came up with a system that sort of punished the developers well, and the end development. The solution. And, and uh, it also punishes us because it makes it more uh, difficult to yeah, process these things. We get it, you know, the rather we, we have had, you know, you shouldn't have to go three or four reviews. I only wanted to use the uh, elevated review process when we had a difference of opinion. So, if something, you know, this right. possible that, that I could not see things the same way as the engineer and they could convince another third party uh, that they're correct. But that's the way I envisioned the elevated review and that's the way we were doing it. Now we have to do it if you've got two letters. If you're on your second letter, you don't even issue the second letter, which is awkward too, because people were trying to find out what went wrong, and I'm not allowed to send it to them. And they have, uh, if you if you can't fix it in two days, well, certain things you can't fix in two days. So um, that's where we're at. So we're we're growing pains trying to get rid of it, uh, used to it, <laughs> try to get rid of it, but uh, that's a Freudian slip on my part. Uh, <laughs> We're trying to uh, work through it. A problem is I don't know the region doesn't like it either. Oh, so that so yeah. it's I, I I sympathize with them. I don't I don't think it's a problem. But they they were told how that they have to do it now, and uh, and it, they're trying to make it more difficult so districts won't follow the directions. I think <laughs> and send them up. So we'll we'll get through it uh, as soon as I get to talk to John. Yeah, uh, just uh, trying to figure out how to just handle it. Uh, in the meantime. There's going to be some people that are probably not happy that their permits taken longer and longer, which was the goal not not to do. Yeah, it's the opposite of the goal. Yes, for certain people that can't get it right the first time, and, and hardly anybody ever gets it right the first time. You would think they would. Oh, well, you can't you because we, I I sympathize with the engineering development because it's always changing. Right. We don't. We 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 never remain stagnant. So, mm -hmm. ABACs came in at the beginning of the year, so that was a learning curve for a lot of people. 
And then the, the uh, offsite discharge analysis came in in 2019, but now they're updating it as we speak. So there's lots of things that change. So it's, I don't uh, think that it's not because they're intentionally submitting bad plans. It's just things that need to be it's addressed. It's not up with the fluid changes in it. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds like it's a kettle of fish. <laughs> All righty. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. And now onto something more pleasant. Michelle. Yes, more pleasant. I just wanted to let you know that we had a winner at the state competition for the poster contest in oh, the wonderful. second and third grade category. Yep. So their poster will go on to the national contest, but um, that doesn't get judged until January, February time frame. And then I guess, I don't know if we were the only ones that noticed there is a digital art category, but uh, Delaware County was the only one that had submissions. So um, I guess by fault, they won <laughs> in the seventh through ninth grade and tender response grade categories. Um, so their uh, digital art submissions will also go on to the national contest. So technically we have three entries. So. Excellent. Yeah. People will remember Dallas County Conservation. That's right. Well, very good, Michelle. I'm sure it was your too late to the meeting, okay? <laughs> okay, so next up, recognition of Clyde Hunt and Frank McKee. So what's happening? This is something that we you brought up the, the, a few meetings ago. Right. And I and it didn't get on the agenda last meeting, but it's basically we were talking about tree donation. And I know the state now has a program because it's a way you can donate three dollars on your license fund uh, when you renew your license and it's called the keystone tree fund but they also take memorial donations as well and that would be and it gives it to a tree vitalized uh the 10 million uh was it 10 000, 10 million trees fund and also uh that the, you know, the streamside buffers and uh, and think that that's what they do with these trees. So I thought that was a good suggestion. Yeah, right. So we could use this program to get trees for Frank. Well, you would donate the money to this right, fund exactly. and they would right. have donated to other people to plant trees. Okay. In their name. In their name. Would it be something that, you know, there would be some recognition on it. I'm thinking that we would time. develop a certificate. Okay. And then we would develop the certificate with the donation amount and uh, present it to Clyde. Clyde. Excellent. That sounds good to me. Does everybody else like this idea of doing this? I think it's only right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now the amount, please. Oh, the amount. <laughs> so give me some suggestions. <laughs> well. I think I think we're I think our mini grant program says a hundred dollars. You're gonna get me a tree for a hundred dollars? Oh, that's why we're donating to a program. Oh, oh and yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So we have to donate to this program and get the tree from them and the No, that they, they would just they would goes into their keystone. Mm -hmm. Fund, yeah. and then they 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 provide projects from that money to people that apply to them. Okay. So it's a pool of money. They're right. pulling their resources. So what do we do to apply? Mm -hmm. So what do we do to? We apply? just have to donate the money to them. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. We just have to send them a check to. You want to take the vote on this, folks? The one hundred for each of them. Yes. Okay. Any foundation? Okay. Good, Ray. Thank you. Second. Steve. Okay, this is, this motion is to donate two hundred dollars one one hundred for Frank, one hundred for Clyde in order to put trees and highlighting your service. And whatever it's more or less goes into the yeah. uh, certificate. Right, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and that package was in your packet too, so you uh -huh. want to look at the program. I took, copied it off the website. Oh, so good, a little right. ugly, but it's in there. I believe it's here. All right. Oh, I see. Yep. All right. Excellent. Very good. Yeah, Frank uh, Clyde was a, a volunteer and an associate director for a long time, volunteer for the Derby Creek Valley Association with okay. us, and he helped us uh, with a lot of different tree uh, planning programs. 
And Frank was the director here for 30 some years. Yeah, right. So this is uh, they well, well deserve this recognition, I think. Mm -hmm. So that would be wonderful. Everybody in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Okay, good. All righty, so let's. I'll take take care of it and have certificate ready for you to sign it next meeting and then we'll figure out how we're going. I think I don't know if Frank's around or if Frank's in, we can always in Florida. Or, right. <laughs> right. Rather than having to write a letter to the board, we can always call him. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Right whether she had heard anything about him and she said, yeah, he's still out there doing things. So that's good. Oh, okay. Apparently always volunteered for a Montessori school tree program and teaching them how to tap trees for um, maple syrup, et cetera. You know? So I think he's still around. Good. So that'll be good. And well, we're in that vein, just so you know, I don't know if anybody's heard that um, Bill Brainerd had passed away. Right. Yeah. It's been a, within the last month or so that they, yes. they were having the memorial service soon. But right. Mary Andy Saul is the one that told me about it. I didn't see it. Right. I think I saw it on the Sierra Club. Will you forward the memorial information if you get it? If I yeah, if you send it, mm -hmm. I it might be over by now. Right? Maybe we need to know. Andy from just stops by and talks to me when he comes into this solid waste meeting. So that's right, why right. I'm saying that up to him. Yeah. Bill did not look good the last time I saw him. I thought it. it wasn't a bike accident, was it? Yeah. No, he wasn't riding his bike. So no. yeah. He looked uh, like too weak to uh, even do that the last time I saw him. He was probably still riding his bike. <laughs> 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 attend every meeting here. Right, yeah, right, exactly. We went uh, walk into the planning department for many years. Exactly. I remember he was, uh, I, took, I took him to a, um, a, uh, a meeting with PACD regional meeting, uh -huh. and I had to take the bike with me because he, okay. he drove up with me, but then I had to let him out at a certain place so he could ride. Right. <laughs> Personal integrity was involved. <laughs> I'm sorry to that, Bill. Yeah. And I do think about that, and then I'm glad you brought it up because it stuck in my mind. So maybe we'll, we'll need to make a tree for Bill, too. I don't know. What do you think? Are we getting two trees? <laughs> that's all your call. Memorial bike rack. That's a great <laughs> idea. There should be one here. Yeah, it was real yeah, it was yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. Big, that's a great idea. I'm probably thinking, Steve. <laughs> Maybe we should discuss how much they would cost. Yeah. <laughs> Before we go that far. Yeah. But I bet a lot of Wayne Raynards who died. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, how old he was? I don't know. He seemed like he had been around forever. Yeah. But yeah. he's such a marvel. Right? Yeah, we well, lived right down off of uh, Hilda Seaway. Yeah. yeah. Well, he uh, he lived on Claude Debaton's property for a long time at Foxtrot when it was beyond the Alice Grimm Boulevard. And then when his mother passed away, he he donated a lot of money to the Marple Township Historical. Society, and I think he was part owner of that, where they had their office there on Jackson Hall. Like three hundred thousand dollars. So. He certainly got a lot of use out of his body. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Bicycle everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> if I stayed a little after the meeting, I would see him biking <laughs> across the reservoir there. Like, you know, so. I mean, you'd see him in the middle of the winter yeah. on the highway. Yeah. It's crazy. Just amazing. And I said to my husband, I know that man. He said, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know something crazy? But he's like, plastic carts on. No, they did the milk cart. Right. 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 Yeah. And the hard hat. And the hard hat. Yes, the people had donated him a bicycle helmet and wouldn't wear it. Right. Hard hat. Hard hat. Right. Hard hat. Right. 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 That's a good point. I forgot that. Alrighty, so we'll have to look into that. Let's. I'll try to see about the bike rack. Right and see how much they cost. Because we could have a bike rack right here, maybe. People may bicycle to here, right? That'd be okay. There's no bike rack right here, is there? Well, I don't know if there's any in the Palm Nine or not. Okay. In the center part. Right. 
Okay, we will check that out. I'm like there with the list. Okay. Industry. Make notes of that a bike. I don't know that the parks department is taking many memorial things anymore because they, they were getting uh, worried about becoming a memorial park. Oh. Yeah. So. Well, a bike rack would be subtle. I'm sure. Um, I think the part, the new policy for many parks is um you, the things that are planted uh are acceptable, things that are I have to read it again the final version, but plantings were okay, but in part infrastructure now. Yeah, that's what I thought. I remember seeing something. Right, is that what you remember seeing? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of discussion, and I think that's where they're in. Yeah, the wording was correct. Remember, I, I might have been at the meeting and offered some sort of advice, like maybe you have some caveat there, like if the tree has to be moved or taken down in the future, that could be okay. If you can't predict what will happen in the plans. Right. So we will follow up on that for it will become more business. Okay. All right. All right. New business. Introduction of the newest conservation district technician, Carmen Swiger. Hello. Um, I'm Carmen Swiger. I moved here at the end of July from Nashville, Tennessee, Whoa. where I studied plant and soil science. And so I'm working here on August 1st. All righty. Almost a month in. Do you know a little bit about your background? Yep. No, we're, 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 you were in the Air Force. Did I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to have enough to do with the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> so that's nice. Um, you moved here to get to have this job? Yeah. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So this is wonderful. I get what I'm planning on sticking around. That's good. Nice. Well, welcome. Thank you. We look forward to getting to know you then. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carmen. Yeah. Next up is the multifunction buffer grant project update. Karen. Oh, so it's a mouthful. What's that? It? It's a mouthful. It is. Yep, we've been, we actually moved it <laughs> to MFRB, but um, <laughs> we have. A uh, multifunctional buffer grant from the Pennsylvania Association of Conservation Districts, which filters uh, grants fund, grant funds down from DCNR. Um, so we currently have one with Haverford Township. Um, they just finished up their plantings at the Haverford Reserve um, and another one at Powder Mill Park in Havertown. Mm -hmm. um, so they submitted all their documentation for reimbursement. We're just working out the details and to, making sure all the math is correct and all that good stuff. So Excellent. we're just about ready to close that out, but I don't have a final amount to reimburse them yet. Uh -huh. That's why we're not signing a check for them today. Right. Hopefully next I think time. I'll be busy. Enough. Yes. <laughs> um, so hopefully next time we'll be able to close that project out. Um, and then this past month, or maybe when you, at the end of July, um, we developed a grant application for the same program to do a multifunctional buffer at Smedley Park. And the multifunctionality of this project is going to be a live state nursery. So we're going to be planting source material for live state clippings. So the live state clippings to be um, stuck in over in stream banks and they'll take root in the stream banks um, and, you know, hopefully stabilize the party of stream banks. So, Good. Uh, this is a partnership with the Master Watershed Stewards, obviously Delaware County Parks and Recreation. Um, so we did just get approval for that grant, uh, so we are moving forward with that. Excellent. Good work. All righty. Making the world a better place. Uh, okay, next up, electric ATV purchase, which would be assigned to the Parks Department and shared. Yeah, uh, I was working um, with motor vehicle management. They were picking up two of these. Um, originally, they were going to get gators, uh, John Deere gators, and I convinced them that we should move to the electric ones. So we yeah. waited a while, and then these uh, Polaris's came out, and he was looking for the park police to get two of them because of all the uh, non-paved trails and stuff that we have all over. And um, and I thought that uh, the amount of times that we've worked on these things, uh, parks and trails, and we do our MS4 inspections, that we could benefit from that. Uh, we had some money available, and I thought 
that we could partner and purchase it for the county and, and then and share it with Mark. Mark would keep it in his uh, domain and then we would borrow it as we needed. We could probably even also think about using it for um, projects such as sewer lines and uh, highways and um, uh, utility pipelines mm -hmm. that we have a lot of down here in Delaware County yeah. when we're doing inspections because they're, they are rather time consuming. So that's what help with that as well. Getting to them with and you. I don't know the price, price of them yet because um, uh, Brian uh, Hudak had left with the, the county and I don't know with the park police I got. I talked to um, Francine Locke about it a little bit and uh, trying to get some information from um, uh, uh, public works who might have done the CIP and then also the purchasing department too to see if it proceeded or uh, whether or not we still have a chance to get in with this uh, purchase when mm -hmm. you buy. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. I think that would be great. I can see everyone riding on the house. I know, is everybody yeah. on board with this? This is the first I'm hearing about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not the best. <laughs> well, I would like to see Don Quinella. I don't have the legs to get around Don Quinella. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I think it would be uh, uh, and also the other parks, even the even the trails that we have in Chester Creek Trail and uh, have a lot of stormwater management things that we have to check on mm -hmm. as well. So and I don't like the idea of driving our, our vehicle truck. We did it once mm -hmm. uh, down the trail, but yeah, I like the electric little little yeah, smaller. Right, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't do as much to like a flathead with it. Well, you, you can get a trailer for like 2000, yeah. too, so we can mm -hmm. we can find that. But Mark has one already mm -hmm. a trailer, so we'll a good borrow, borrow again, right? Yeah. Share and borrow. Right. Right. Excellent. So well, the idea of everyone riding around all the time. I hope that we can. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's only a one part of the park thing. Hopefully, I think. <laughs> so four wheelies. <laughs> Is it four wheels? Steve so wants to know. Four wheel drive. Yeah. 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 Well, that's good. That's more safe than the three wheel and yeah. three wheel hazardous side. And at the time, they thought they could get them on state contracts. So, uh, but like I said, Brian left, and I haven't kind of found anybody else to talk about to me yet. Right, exactly. They haven't replaced him, and you don't know who else to go to, right? Right now, we're right. sort of in limbo until I talk to uh, Danielle Boyd at the CIP, whether we she's got a whole bunch of electric vehicles. I don't remember seeing them safety design. It came to my mind again, and I asked about it because John Deal had, uh, when he was sworn in as the chief, he made a thing about getting these. You know, we just talked about the improvements with the bike patrol, and he talked about uh, getting these uh, ATVs. So I know it was still on his mind as well. Step away. What? All righty, that's a good thing. I think it'll be very good. I can just see Michelle just moving around out there. <laughs> Yahoo! Speaks with lessons first. <laughs> and a helmet. You'll need a helmet and safety points. It's a lot smaller than the pickup truck. Yeah. Right? yeah right. <laughs> well, um, next up, director's terms expiring. Mm. Yep. You, Ray, um, and Randy. Randy's not here, but Ray, would you be willing to accept nomination next year? Yeah. Oh, good. And well, I could talk to Randy, and then I can start uh, working on the letters to the nominating committee. Just remember that you better be on your good behavior. Your social media. I think I think I'm Okay. All right. Next up, what have you got to say for yourself? Oh, um, I think we are expecting a lot of uh, climate money uh, for conservation practices that we have some this year, but I think in the next year it'll be there'll be more of it. Uh -huh. um, so we didn't have any applications for funding from Delaware County Committee Farmers. So um, we had talked to our local work group meeting, and I mentioned this at a board meeting before about um, doing some more outreach um, in Delaware County. So yeah. if anyone has any ideas for um, interested in partnering in that, that would be great. Right. It's available and right. um, we don't 
only few farms that we've worked with, and I guess we've or there are many farms, but yeah, exactly. Uh, but certainly, and we do have urban money too, and it's not this year. It was not available for anyone outside of the city of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, but if there are urban farms too, that would yeah. also be helpful. I'm sure there farms. must be in Chester, right? If there's some urban mm -hmm. farms in Chester, mm -hmm. that would be great. So yeah, so we are here, here and available to come out, mm -hmm. even if someone's not on funding. So. Yeah, we did talk to you about um, uh, the woman that um, Harvey property, Grove Street Preserve. She wanted uh, some assistance because she had an idea about planting the way the Indians did with potatoes and stuff in yeah. the forested areas. And she came in and talked to us for a while, and we were, yeah, we're and I was flipping. Um, oh, she did good. Okay, that's what I wanted to check. Yeah. So um, I asked. One of our conservationists to go out. It got there yet. Yeah, she has a problem with uh, it's runoff from the adjoining roads. It's been a little problem for a long time because uh, there was an inlet and it discharged down to uh, one of our former directors, Mr. Nagel's property, and um, damaged his wall. Oh, the township just filled in the inlet with cement. So then it all ran onto her oh. property. And this property. Uh, was uh, damaged in a fire and they and they bought it. It was, it was Harvey in the morning, his wife. Oh, the oh. And she donated it to the uh, Natural Lands Trust, so it's in a preserve called the Rose Tree Preserve. Uh, oh, good. So she may be eligible for some development funds, right? Well, at least the, we, the, the first thing is just get some advice on how to uh, uh, handle this runoff problem. So this other goal that she's working with some other people um, in bear fruit. Can she get money to hire someone to assess her property or do she it? was tied into a lot of different people that mm -hmm. universities and stuff with on this Native American planting okay. thing. Was, I know. She was talking to me and she was very passionate about it. Uh, it was going over my head because I, I could see it being for I could, I don't see the commercial potential because I don't know you can grow enough volume, but the step subsistence, you know, yeah. that people could do right. use it on subsisting and homesteading. Mm -hmm. I could see there be uh, uh, a market to promote it, you know, right. so, but, but, but I don't know. Right. That's not my specialty. <laughs> and we can come out and if someone has a question like that, we can come out and yeah, look at it with right plans for them with engineers that do design. So excellent. Maybe she took her off, huh? No, we did. So did. he's already okay. talking. Okay. One step behind. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent idea. Yeah. Thanks, Beth. Mm -hmm. Okay, Linda is can't talk. She Linda, did you send a message. Oh, did she? Yes. Yeah, Where did I do it? Okay. If we could pass on the following, we have been doing work with Michelle and then we'll do some. Place your medicine, something really good to you. Okay, yeah, so uh, Linda's been working. We had a field order that mm -hmm. Linda had done. And what was that project? For PSS Bethel. Yeah, the, they, it's uh, a storage facility that's being installed in Bethel Township. They were having some permanent control issues, some sequencing issues. Um, they uh, didn't have the permit for the retaining wall, which was putting a lot of their stormwater maintenance um, like sequencing out of, out of step. Um, so there were two permanent failures that resulted in a pollution event um, in the east branch of Neiman's Creek. Um, so they, they stopped working. They installed their compost filter socks in a fashion that can you know, handle the amount of uh, water that's coming down on a 24,000 square foot. Go sheet down. <laughs> yeah, um, so um, they're back in the sequence there. Uh, I haven't been back out there since, but uh, from what I've been told, their retaining walls being installed, their detention basins being installed now. So things are back into 
sequence. Mm -hmm. Lines of excellent. Now, the other thing that Linda might would tell us, but she um, wasn't able to attend. She was at an inspection, but we had a our, another um, virtual meeting for the compliance enforcement meeting with uh, with her boss, mm -hmm. and um, and we went through a different cases. There's another. Uh, Krista Brown, who used to be the MS4 person in the Southeast Regional mm -hmm. Office, got promoted to Stormwater. So she has uh, had her staff uh, looking into some of the older compliance actions that we had that, that uh, weren't be, weren't handled by Frank before he retired. Mm -hmm. So two of the ones that they're working on was um, the uh, one in Radnor, mm -hmm. <laughs> Harvard Road. It's off of Bryn Mawr. It's a, mm -hmm. we have two Harvard roads in Bradner, Brad, mm -hmm. but this one was one that uh, the developer started building it and died, and then right. the heirs had like 17 heirs, and they just sat there for 30 years. Well, the then they the big pit. Hmm? Uh, with, uh, Smith's oh, yeah. So the problem was they got a the, the road was already in. But they were had to take fill from one side of the road and put it on the other side. So they needed an NPDS permit. Mm -hmm. We gave them an NPDS permit for those two lots to start off. And then over um, the uh, COVID, <laughs> they built all the houses without any permits. So okay. now, now we're trying to figure out. So nobody noticed? Radner gave them permits, I guess, uh, which probably fell through the cracks. But it, it's similar to Adrosan. Adrosan, uh, you know, building like that, building one house at a time. They come in every time for their permit, you know, amendment. But this one slipped through somehow. And That's... nobody got approval for each individual house. They didn't get Correct. it. Correct. Who's the developer? I... Um, it's, I don't know the exact name on the permit as it would be under a different LLC, but it's Rockwell Custom Homes and Media. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So they're trying to figure it out now. But Frank to let it go for a while. Um, yeah, the, the problem is now trying to we have a permit that we can't close out because we don't know what the other sides whether they complied with stormwater. And so I think that we just need to meet with the township engineer and also the state. We'll see how they're going to handle it there right. now that it's being handled by central. So we'll see. That was one. Um, the other one was. Um, and uh, dealing with the uh, Idle Hour Tennis Club. Uh, they built a levy and um, they had, uh, without permits, Upper Darby let them, didn't get the permits in hand and uh, authorized them to do some work without that permit in hand. And uh, so, and then we got complaints from the people in Springfield who think that they were being flooded because of the new, it wasn't a new levy. There was always a levy there. They just thought it was higher and changed. There's a the golf club on the other side, right? Rolling Hills, yeah. Rolling Hills. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, but this that didn't affect Rolling Hills. Rolling Hills is another complaint. We had a big public meeting about this these problems because the creek comes down and does a uh, right turn. It mm -hmm. it erodes the, the stream bad, yeah. and there was a debris dam, and they were complaining that Upper Darby had this debris dam on their side of the creek. So Upper Darby cleaned it out, but then there was complaints that they moved it just into the floodplain and not out of the floodplain. So, but uh, that part I think uh, was inspected and resolved. And uh, it, it, Upper Darby did what was right. Upper Darby didn't let people build in the floodplain. They have a park. Well, exactly <laughs> the right. problem is that when there was the big erosion from everything that's developed, caused a lot of the trees to come down during this hurricane, and it blocked up part of the channel. But that that could have backed up some water, but they, they were just backing up from the bridge. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. People were very passionate at that meeting. <laughs> I'm sure people are. I think they. Oh. Okay, so now we're back to your report, Ed. Unless you told us everything we know already. I probably do. That will watch. Do you have a copy of my report? Uh, so there will be a, a report for July and August. 
Um, we're in pretty good shape with erosion control. We have one that's, uh, that's overdue at this point. I didn't do the report for uh, July, you know, whether, but uh, July was a vacation month. Uh, so that took up, took it down. The problem with the number of reviews in August was that we had a couple larger sites that we had to review and it took up a lot of time. Um, but uh, one of them is the um, Belcora tunnel, which was a nightmare. Yeah, we don't have to review the tunneling part of it, just the which various shafts, anyway. the, the five shafts that are there that are going down 100 feet into the ground. And they were developed rather than fit a separate little plan. So it's like reviewing five plans instead of one. And they were done by different engineers, which made it even more complicated. So that took almost a week of time to get through that. And it was okay, that recently that uh, tunnel was part of the uh, topic of conversation in that uh, and there were Delcor representatives at the meeting. And they said that that tunnel, an upside of that tunnel was that it would uh, alleviate the CSOs in, in Chester. Chester City, I think it's that they wouldn't really have it. 90% of the CSOs would be eliminated by that tunnel. The 11 foot diameter pipe, but they don't they don't need that much to convey it. So it's actually a giant storage tank. Yeah. So. 100 feet underground from Delcor, uh -huh. you're storing stuff from Delcor. Yeah, so. They, they're trying to make say they don't have to send any sewage from Eastern Delaware County to Philadelphia like it's like has been for yeah. years. Yeah. That that's the that's the reason they started the tunnel and then they they uh, yeah to do that to transfer it all over but then they needed the extra capacity for some of the other problems I think. Uh, so I don't know what, what DP is going to do with that. But I've never had a project like that. I don't think I've, I've seen anybody propose something like that before. And I don't know what other kind of problems we're running into. There'll be better minds than mine working on uh, reviewing the tunnel process. But so, my problem so is they you didn't. Don't, the county doesn't review that. DEP reviews that. We review just the erosion controls for the five above ground areas. The stripping on the ground. The yes. Under That's going to be done by solid. Uh, I don't even know. But I don't even solid waste management. I guess to, to the sanitary. And you said the meeting I was in that initially there's going to be a certain number of shafts. Built and then, but they plan for the future to have additional shafts built. Yeah, they never said they didn't that. <laughs> There's five of them now. I thought the five were going to be the shafts were also for uh, uh, where they bring the stuff out of the ground, but they didn't even say that on their plan. So somehow that it's got to get out the water and the dirt from the tunneling operation to replace it with a concrete or a pipe, whatever mm -hmm. it's going to be made out of. Uh, so it's got to come out of the ground somewhere. So they didn't even address that in their plan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a mystery. So we we had a meeting with them uh, prior to uh, it's, it's an individual permit because of contamination. It's they're building one of the stamp shafts is on the Norwood landfill site. So it's a capped landfill that they're building the tunnel to. So in the shaft. I, I was shocked. Scott was almost an EPA Superfund site. Matt has something where, where is that? He's going to check it the out. The Norwood landfill? Well, yeah, that, that, that's right next to the Heights Refuge. And that's where they're planning on digging The shaft. It's set in the plan right through the cap. So, so the five shafts are not contiguous. They're all over the place? Yes. Oh, along... uh, yeah, it's like all along the route um, from um, uh, Tennecum, Ridley. Uh, Darby Borough, City of Chester, I think, yeah. where the shafts are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's nothing like I've ever seen before. So we'll I'd like to see a diagram of this craziness. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, just, the plan didn't the even have a, a, a drawing to show the oh, no. No, on, on one plan. So that was another thing I asked for. <laughs> it was it. They and they had guidance. They had two uh, uh, free application meetings with the regional office too. But regional office of DP, DP. DP. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, and I've attended it. And yeah, so these are things that uh, they had to figure out how to permit it. So because they're connected, they considered it like that's why it's all one permit. But mm -hmm. when they started to prepare it, Ari had to go through uh, three different uh, administratively incomplete letters too. Because the engineers kept 
they oh, didn't they even want different engineers, right? Yeah. 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 It was very it's like looking at three different projects each time. Yes. Yeah. And then they're like using a mess. Um, like township engineers from each of the townships. I think they're private in the, um, private No, they're specialists. They're specialists. Like, Mott McDermott is one of them. And then HDR. HDR and Mott McDermott are the two engineering firms that are working. Remember the depth? I remember them saying it was really, really yeah, deep. Yeah, right, right. I remember saying it too. 100, yeah, 100 feet. Probably deeper than any other utilities that are already there. Much deeper. Sounds like a problem waiting to happen. Don't know. Well, the way this, the existing system is no. It's no jam either. Yeah, so <laughs> and, um, I, But the fact that you're investing in this seems like it ought to be an improvement. Well, it's a politically charged issue as well, because they, they went to court over this uh, fee going into Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, the judge had ruled that they had to pay Philadelphia um, so many million dollars to connect to their system and pay for improvements or they come up with this alternative. So this, that's what makes a political charge. We'll see how that. We'll keep this informed. There's a lot the judges involved, so that makes it even more complicated. Oh, yes, right. <laughs> well, those communities have enough. Yeah, but uh, the problem is that all of them uh, when Philadelphia did a study on um, Darby Creek mm -hmm. and found out that the fecal coliform and pollution loads after a storm event aren't aren't any better than the 29 direct discharges or CSOs that they have mm -hmm. on Coffs Creek because all the sewer lines are overflowing and a right. big storm. But they're just not, the capacity's not right. there. That's why Haverford was wanting to put in a, a million and a half gallon excess tank in, mm -hmm. in the park and they they were denied eventually they didn't get to build that which park hey right there at mary's place next to the mary's place right next to ray yeah <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's right. i don't know how long it doesn't that's sound like that long ago but yeah that's i remember it was mary's place that's where the old sewer plant was and then every time they had uh, uh overflow it was so we just bought the park and Darby Creek. So we have problems. Only when it rains. Oh, it hasn't been doing that. So yeah, it's, it's, we're fine right now. <laughs> we're good, right? <laughs> so that's all I have to point out. Right. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ed. Next up is Michelle. Okay. Uh, yeah, just for July and August, we've been seeing a steady flow of new permit applications coming in. So that's been a lot of our time. A um, few more complaints via um, DEP. So they'll call DEP hotline um, and then their um, complaint coordinator sends them on to us. So we got quite a few of them in July and August. And, um, and finally, just notice the terminations. We've been seeing a lot more submissions, which is uh, definitely a good thing. But um, I think out of at least the eight I looked at in the past month or two, they've all been denied. So um, whether a lot of paperwork issues, but then also stuff in the field that's just not completed or stabilized. So that's been the majority of, of the summer. <laughs> that's been your summer, huh? Yep. So, so um, much stuff. Can I ask you the logistics center at the airport? Was that? Uh, the road, the relocation of the road, or the logistics center. The logistics center is actually, um, it's actually the industrial. I'll call it the industrial park mm -hmm. to the west of the, or yeah, to the west of the airport. So it's where it was the old it's at West Westing House, oh, well, where they put that big um, FedEx facility in five, ten yeah. years ago. But that's what they're calling the project is Airport Logistics Center. Okay. Um, they're proposing two, I think, huge I wanted buildings. Um, the first one doing it in phases. So mm -hmm. um, so they submitted for the demolition of the existing facilities and the construction of one of the buildings and they're submitting to us here. 
and that will be uh, an individual MQDS permit, or it is, um, so it will be reviewed by the region for stormwater um, due to some of the contamination on the site. Mm -hmm. so. But the road relocation, we actually had a pre-construction meeting for last week for the Tinica Island Road reconstruction. So that's been permitted um, in the planning on starting to break ground here in the next few weeks. Anything else you'd like to report, Michelle? No, that's everything I have. Yeah. Looks like you've been pretty busy anyway. Alrighty, next up. Oh. So, uh, yeah, kind of um, going off of what Michelle said, um, very busy last couple of months in terms of permitting. Um, lots of uh, permitting that was done in July. Um, I did, I, I had one NOT that was approved, but this was a permit that um, I've gotten several iterations of the NOT. So it was kind of just working hand in hand. Eventually we got to a point where it was complete and their site was also uh, in stable condition when I went out there. Um, a few others were denied for um, field issues and for completeness issues. Um, August, um, so same thing. I, there were a couple of complaints throughout the last couple of months too. Um, Runny Meats Farms, that project out in town, uh, Edgemont Township, I was getting dust complaints um, and then we had a really bad rainstorm and I got a complaint for runoff. Um, so that was well, keeping me busy for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's about it. If there's anything that anybody wants clarification on, um, feel free to ask me. Pretty good. Thank you, Ari. No problem. And now Carmen's first report. Um, I've been shadowing Michelle and Ari out on inspections and reconstruction meetings and some complaints. And I've also been looking my way through the Clean Water Academy. And uh, Michelle's uh, walking through some permit applications and NOCs. So getting some hands on learning as well as we do. Excellent. Very good. She's a good mentor. So I think she threw the basic part of the Clean Water Academy. Now we you know, <laughs> yeah, has like so. 36 of the classes. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. Okay, well, thank you for submitting the report card. Okay. Got the list of all of them, huh? All right, next up is Karen. So let's see, besides spending lots of time developing the multifunctional buffer and application, um, I took so much time because of the utilities that Nico mentioned. We had to figure out exactly where to place things so that the mowers could get by and uh, lots of coordinating for that project. So unfortunately, uh, you know, but we cleared that all up and submitted the application and funded. So we're moving forward with ordering materials and, and things like that. Um, I did want to mention that the low volume road program is still going strong. Um, we are accepting application. The deadline is Thursday for the fall 2022 um, grant round. I did visit uh, two sites in Concord Township, so I'm hoping that they will uh, submit an application by then. Uh, I know they intend to. We just hope that Okay. Um, and we did receive a smaller grant application from Edgemont Township um, actually to enhance the project that they had just completed. So uh, they did just complete their project from spring 2020, I think it was. Um, and they submitted their paperwork. So I'm just sorting through that now. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to pay that out as well next month. Um, I wanted to mention too that NRCS has been up in Delaware County uh, working on their soil survey update. Um, so they were up here in 2019. They started this process, I think, mm -hmm. uh, to update specifically Delaware County's soil survey. Um, 
they, I guess they haven't been updated since the 60s, but it's fine. <laughs> Change has happened. Yeah, so uh, a couple of folks from Frederick, Maryland have been up um, digging holes throughout the county. So we've gone out, Nico and I have gone out with them a couple of times just mm -hmm. to learn a little bit about soils and see what urban soils are like. And they speak a different language. <laughs> uh, but it was it was very interesting um, when I did understand what they were talking about. And we learned a lot. Um, let's see. I've been preparing to uh, track and enter projects, uh, specifically growing greener projects uh, that are completed. Uh, the watershed specialists throughout the state are now tasked with entering the goals and accomplishments of those projects into Practice Keeper, which I'm learning about through the Clean Water Academy. Um, and from what I'm picking up, it's it's a statewide um, database similar to like a GIS program for tracking stream improvements. Um, so I think I'm excited to see what yeah, projects yeah. are going on in the county because we're not always notified of growing greener no. projects, even though we're supposed to be. <laughs> yes. Um, so looking forward, you know, to seeing what's going on. It's and then those are the things that I wanted to highlight besides, you know, about the beach. Um, can I uh, mention something? We, um, all kinds of rumors are swirling that DCNR is going to have this pop up grant round next month, next September, like I guess next week. <laughs> um, and it's going to be $26 million and it's going to be this new growing greener aqua money. And a um, big chunk of it is going to be for forestation and tree planting. Okay. So if it happens, which it hasn't been announced yet, um, oh, and the turnaround is really fast. So they want all applications in by like Halloween and they're going to do their announcements by Christmas because. I think this is like the last hurrah of the current administration in terms of spending the growing reader money. Um, I just bring all this up because if it happens and they make this announcement and if indeed it's a big chunk of it is reforestation, we should be poised to kind of get the word out to all of the yeah. typical people who do plan things. Uh, and I think because it's ARPA money, it's going to be no match. Oh, wow. So it's not all worked out yet. and. The people in DCR are like running with chickens with their heads cut off trying to put this together. Okay. Um, but I think it's going to happen. Okay. So, and that's strange. It's just, it's a lot, it's going to be a lot of money that comes out really quickly. And kind of whoever's ready is going to get it. Mm -hmm. So we should be ready. Yeah. Right. Heads up. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they do, I think DCNR is working with PACD again mm -hmm. on another uh, funding program. So they do the multifunctional buffer. Mm -hmm. funding. And I, I believe that they have another grant program that's for all riparian buffers. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't have to have that multifunctionality. Mm -hmm. So if they're also expanding to just reforestation, that's, that's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. You have a database of like um, townships and groups that typically do tree plantings? Um, through our tree vitalized yeah, program, I uh, just historically, mm -hmm. the ones that have, I know just off the top of my head, the Common applicants, mm -hmm. um, but I would say you know to start with our large services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I mean the, the, the county will go to all our municipalities, make sure they know that this is available. But you no, know, it's hard if you if we don't you know, do this stuff all the time. It's hard to mm -hmm. put like, applications. Yeah, target yeah. Target yeah. A month or two. Right. Right. Okay. Not, if you're targeting disadvantaged communities, those are the ones that usually couldn't be ready in that short amount of time. Yeah, I wonder what their um, what the grant guidelines are going to be like if the yeah. application is that right. short. Right. I'm sure it's going to go through the same portal they're using now. And it's going to look a lot, a lot like the grant applications. They don't have time to change it. Right. Right. Yeah. So they're probably going to use their existing programs and then, you know, maybe tweak them. Okay. Um, they still have a webinar. <laughs> yeah. We had like, what would you say on that um, Keystone? Program. Yeah, like 10 or 11 people that wanted tree. Yeah, so that was another thing we had to mention. <laughs> the Keystone 10 million trees program. Mm -hmm. um, I brought it up to the board last year, maybe, mm -hmm. and I was pulled in different directions. Um, and then it, it kind of came up again 
the district did receive, I think we're up to 15 requests right now for free trees. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to find out the logistics of handling requests. Yeah, I don't know if we need to go to every single site and go through an evaluation form for the trees and coordinate getting it to these people. I don't know. Homeowners are going to be eligible, but I'm working on figuring out and I'm talking to some of the other conservation districts because it doesn't want to reach me. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, yeah, the way she found out originally, we can set some of our own policies. So, like, um, you know, do we want to get into all how, how many trees do you have to order and how big an area do you have to have to be eligible for the program? Mm -hmm. and rather than two or three trees at the moment. Right, how much impact? And then, because if, if you have to have up to a thousand trees to have them delivered here, if not, we have to go to Chester County where there's going to be, because they're coming from October, so we got to pick them up. And they aren't, they are not seedlings that are going to be in trays, but the trays are like 15 by 15, so you can't stack them. So you, the pickup truck would probably hold maybe nine at the most. Yeah, right, exactly. So it's not like, it, but it's the logistics that she's talking about yes. that we need to find out how we can do. Excited to think about this or trees. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the getting people to commit to planning. Areas that are nice grass open areas into trees. It, it, that's that's a sell. And continuing to water them because this year we've had a lot of trouble with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People have planted trees and not watered them. Big issue. All right. Well, that's good. Thanks, Karen. Exciting. And anyway, thanks for these new sticks. You said DCNR too, didn't you? Not DEP. Right. Okay. Papers are sticking together. Wait, I think we're circling the train here. <laughs> Already. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we spent no time on it. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Uh, anything else people want to add? Whatever. Otherwise, I will entertain a motion. I gotta brush my teeth. And everybody's in favor of that. Everybody have a nice memorial. I mean, Labor Day. I wish you were Memorial Day. I'd like to start, <laughs> start over. Again. Again. Yeah, I know. It's been a very busy year, so I'll be Thank you very much for coming into this nicely air conditioned building. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Thank you. Take care. Happy holidays.